Hello everyone. Happy Tuesday. It's time for another episode of Tuesday Live at 5. This is Lena Gursa. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada, and I am super excited to share with you today these fun, girly, pretty, feminine cards featuring the best dressed bundle. Now, this bundle is in the Stampin' Up! January to June mini catalog, which will soon be retiring. It actually retires um, right at the beginning of June. So the good news about this, this about this particular bundle is that it is carrying over, or sorry, I should say the products are carrying over into the new catalog. The downside is that the bundle pricing is not, okay? So when you purchase the stamp set and the dies together, um, you get a 10% discount. However, in the new catalog, that bundle will not, that bundle pricing will not be available. So if you haven't yet scooped this up, um, you might want to do that before the end of the month okay now let me show you in a little bit more detail the stamp set so this stamp set is really fun it's very girly this is not really me I am not a girly girl I am not into perfume and shoes and makeup however I know lots of people who are and so um, having these images in a stamp set is really great to have on hand the other great thing about this set is again we have images and sentiments so it's everything all in one ready to go now this set does coordinate with the set of dies and actually this set of dies is almost like two together okay so we have one um, half the die set that cuts a fun um, treat bag and on Friday I'm gonna be showing you some projects using that but then the other part of the dies cuts the stamped images so it's like I said almost like two sets of dies in one now these particular um, dies do coordinate with the images stamped from the stamp set okay all right, I see lots of people are joining us. I am just going to pull up my live video here on my iPad so I can see who is here. Let me see. Where are we? Come on. There we go. Who's here? Let's see. Oh, we've got Deb. Hey, Deb. How are you? And Nancy and Gail and Heather. Hi everybody, I hope you're having a good week. Um, so yes, this DSP is absolutely gorgeous. Hi Krista, how are you doing? And I am sad to say I only started using it in the last couple of weeks and I'm really regretting that decision because it is gorgeous paper. Now this paper is not carrying over. I mentioned the stamp set and the dies are carrying over into the new catalog. This paper is not. So it is gorgeous and you are going to see lots of the different patterns and it is really, really stunning. So if you haven't picked this up yet, again, it's one that you may want to scoop up before the end of the month. Okay. Now today we are focusing on easel cards. All right. So so there are many, many different takes um, out there on easel cards. So I wanted to show you three different ways to create an easel card. Now, what is an easel card? Well, I'm going to show you a basic one to begin with. So this looks like a typical card, right? Normally you would open it like that, regular card. However, an easel card is just has a little bit of extra scoring and is designed to open up and stand up on a desktop. So it sits like that, okay? And it's not, it's, this particular one is not difficult at all. I'm going to, we're going to start with this one because it is a basic one. Okay. So that's your traditional basic easel card. Then we can change it up a little bit and have only part of the card front pop up. So we're going to do this one next. Okay. Different take on the easel card. And then finally we can really mix it up and play around and do something that looks like that. Okay, so I'm going to show you all three how to do these. Again, they are not difficult. Um, I've certainly stepped them up with adding lots of extra bits and bobs, but um, the, the sort of concept of an easel card is not terribly difficult. So as I said, we're going to start with this one. Hi, Chris. How are you? Hi, Peggy. Hi, Mary Jane. All right, so I'm going to set this aside for a minute. I just want to show you how I created my card base. So this is a piece of mint macaron cardstock. It's four and a quarter by 11 inches. So just half a sheet of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. Okay, I've scored it in the middle at five and a half, just like I would for any other card. However, then I've scored again on one on one half, I've scored half again. So this is two and three quarters. So if I were to put this in my uh, trimmer, this is scored at two and three quarters and five and a half. Okay, so that gives me my base so that... I can stand up the front of my card, okay? 
All right, I'm going to set that aside for a few minutes. We'll come back to that. Right now, we're going to work on putting our card front together. So this, as I mentioned, is a piece of that gorgeous Dress to Impress DSP. Now, on one side, generally, there are girly like makeup and handbags and, and shoes and perfume bottles, but none of that appeals to me. But oh my goodness, this gorgeous florals, they absolutely appeal to me. So that's the side that we are going to use. Um, I also have cut, oh, I should give you the measurements. This is four and one eighth by five and three eighths. Okay. So it's just an eighth of an inch smaller than the card front would be. Okay. I am having a great day, Chris. Thank you. Hi, Julie. Thanks for sharing. Okay, so I have my, my my DSP, then I have one of those beautiful new ornate layer um, frames. So this is cut using the new dies. These are also in the new annual, but right now they are available as a sneak peek promotion. Um, so I've cut this from basic gray cardstock. I'm my my goal here was to create something that looked like a mirror. So this is my decorative mirror frame, and then I have cut out of silver foil cardstock a stitched rectangle. Okay, and that is going to layer in there just perfectly. So we're going to go ahead and glue that on to start. You know what the best thing about doing these videos right now is? <laughs> I don't have to cook dinner on Tuesdays because my husband's too hungry to wait for me to finish. So he's cooking dinner. We're having breakfast for dinner. Um, he's making bacon and eggs, which is just fine with me. Best part is I don't have to cook it. All right. So there is my pseudo mirror. Okay. And then I have ahead of time done a whole bunch of um, stamping and die cutting just in the interest of you not having to sit and watch me color. Okay. So I have stamped. Let me just pull up the stamp set here for a sec. So I've stamped several of these little flowers and die cut them. Um, I've stamped and started to color the lipstick. I'm going to show you how I colored the uh, barrel of the lipstick to get the, the shape on it, the contour. And then I've colored or stamped and cut two pairs of shoes or two sets of shoes or two shoes, one pair. <laughs> <laughs> one of which I've colored, the other one I will show you. And then I've also stamped and die cut and colored the perfume bottle. Okay, so let me show you how I colored the lipstick to start. So you're going to need um, your light and dark smoky slate and then your light black. Okay, so I'm going to start by coloring just the base here. And I'm going to do the whole thing in the light smoky slate. Okay. So I'm just going to color just laying down again. Easiest way I have found when coloring on Whisper White cardstock to get a good blend is to put a layer of the light down first. Okay, so there is that. Then I'm going to bring in my dark and I want to add shadow. So a lipstick too, but this particular one is round. I have one that's square, but this particular one is round. So I'm going to add shadow around the long edges. Okay, and then along the bottom. And that is going to help give the illusion of contour here. So then I'm coming back with my light and I'm blending that out. Now, sometimes when you're blending, you actually get better results if you use your bullet tip, just because you can really dig into that ink and pull it out. It makes a little bit of an annoying squeaky sound. I apologize for that. But we're going to get really nice blend here. But you see how now it's a little bit darker along the edges and it just gives that bit of contour effect. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing at the top here. So I'm going to color this top portion. Again, totally filling it in with the light. And then I'm going to add a little bit of dark along the edges. All right there, and then I'm gonna come back with my light. Whoopsie, I'm moving everything around here and blend that out. Sorry for the squeaking, I'll try to talk so you don't have to listen to the squeaking. <laughs> All right, there we go. Okay, and then the center band, I just used the light black. Who knew there were shades of black, but there are apparently. In Stampin' Up! World, there is. And I'm just going to color that center band in with the dark, or the light black, rather. To me, it's really just a dark gray. Okay, so that is how I colored the lipstick. 
And then to color the shoes, I used Lovely Lipstick. Now this is um, one of the retiring ink colors, okay? And uh, it, these markers are going away, they are retiring. The blends themselves are not, you will see them on the retirement list, they are not retiring, just they're being reconfigured and packaged in pairs. Um, but this particular color is going away. So if this is a color that appeals to you, you may wanna pick that up sooner than later. I'm actually gonna color the entire shoe with the brush tip of my light lovely lipstick to start. So again, that's just to lay down that base layer. And this end is getting quite frayed. It's a good thing these are retiring. <laughs> they will probably not find their way into my retired product sale because they are not in great shape. Maybe I'll give them away to someone. Um, speaking of my retired product sale, it is coming up first Saturday in June and it will be 100% online this year for obvious reasons. Details will be coming out soon. Um, if you are not on my mailing list for my newsletter, you may wanna subscribe, <laughs> okay? Donna, it is not mirrored paper. It's actually just silver foil, but it does give the effect of a mirror. It absolutely does. Okay, so I am I filled I filled the whole thing in with the light and now I'm coming back in with the brush tip of my dark lovely lipstick and I'm just adding shadow along the bottom edge, okay? And then I'm going to come back with the bullet tip again of my light and I am going to blend that out. And again, you do want to use a fair bit of pressure and circular motion here, and that's gonna really pull that color out. Okay, and that's how you're gonna get that nice shadow along the bottom edge. Now you'll notice I'm not adding more color to the inside of the shoe. I want it to be a little bit lighter, um, but I am gonna add a little shadow in a minute, and I'll show you that in a sec. So I'm just gonna blend this all out, pull that color in, And you can work this and work this and work this to get a really nice blend. I'm not gonna take the time to really fuss with it, but you get the idea, okay? This needs to be blended out more, but you guys don't wanna sit and watch and you certainly don't wanna to listen to the squeaky squeakies. All right, then I'm going to take and just add a little bit of shadow just to this part here, which is like the, the inner, inner insole of the shoe. I just tried to put my Tombow lid on my marker. That's how awake I am. <laughs> All right. So now we have everything colored and we can go ahead and arrange all of our elements. So I'm gonna start with my perfume bottle. I'll just tell you, I color the perfume bottle with the dark and light smoky slate and then I use the light uh, petal pink to color the actual perfume, okay? I wanted it to be really, really light. So I'm gonna start by adding just a little bit of Tombow to the corner of my perfume bottle. And we're gonna just sort of put that at a little bit cockeyed, maybe not quite that cockeyed, there we go. And then we're gonna add our tube of lipstick. So these are all just going on with regular glue. You could use glue dots. There's no reason why you couldn't. Uh, you could use snail, you could use fast fuse, whatever makes you happy, okay? And then we are gonna stamp our label before we adhere our shoes. So this label is die cut from Whisper White cardstock using the Stitch So Sweetly dies. And I'm going to stamp this little smudgy stamp. So there are a few little smudgies in this set. This is this one, okay? It's to give sort of a watercolor wash effect. And I don't want to use this full strength because I don't want it to be too dark. So I'm going to ink up my stamp. I'm going to stamp it off once. And then I'm just going to stamp it on my label. Okay, and that gives me a nice light shade. Okay. Then I'm going to bring in my basic gray ink and hello fabulous is my sentiment and we are going to stamp that and I'm going to stamp it so it's a little bit to the left. I'm not worrying about getting it perfectly centered and <laughs> apparently not perfectly straight either because that was not straight. <laughs> oh well, whatever. <laughs> and uh, then we can go ahead and add this to our mirror. Now, we are going to add, before I glue this down, I'm going to add my stilettos here. So I'm going to use, as soon as I find them, a glue dot to adhere one of these to the front of my label, like that. And then the other one is gonna get adhered to the back of the label. 
and just kind of be peeking out there like that. Okay, and then that is going to get popped up on the front of my mirror. So we'll just add a couple of dimensionals here. And I'm going to put one little one on that shoe just so that it doesn't get squished. We'll get rid of our backings. And then this is going to pop on here just like oh, straight would be better than not, right? <laughs> Except my late my stamping isn't straight, so my label's not gonna be straight. And oh my goodness, I'm smelling bacon cooking. Oh my stomach, if my stomach starts growling <laughs> and you can hear it, don't be alarmed. There is not a wild animal in the room with me. It is just that I am really hungry because I didn't have lunch. <laughs> okay, so to add my little flowers, so these guys, again, I stamped and colored and die cut ahead of time. I just colored them using the dark, lovely lipstick blends and the light old olive. So I'm just adding a couple of little mini dimensionals there to tuck that one in there. And then I'm going to add a big and a mini dimensional to this flower. And we're going to pop it in that upper corner, just like that. Okay, and then that is ready to glue onto the front of our card. Now I want this to pop up, but before I do that, we need to add some ribbon. So this ribbon is absolutely... <laughs> You know what, Heather? There was a time that I owned and wore shoes like this all the time. There was a time, long time ago. Hasn't been any time in the last 15 years, I'll tell you that. Okay, so this ribbon is, um, it coordinates with the suite. It's part of the suite. It is called textile ribbon. It is super soft. It almost feels like raw silk. Um, it's a lovely, lovely ribbon, and it only comes in the mint macaron, and it is retiring, which makes me very sad because I love this ribbon. So I'm going to take and add a glue dot, and this is going to go on about an inch and a quarter from the bottom. I'm adding this to the back to my um, DSP panel and I'm gonna add another glue dot here and secure it to the back okay just like that and then we are going to add this and pop it up so I'm gonna add some dimensionals to the back of this and we'll get rid of this Oh yeah, Elfie, I, I kept mine for a long time, and then after I had my son, my feet actually grew by half a size, and I couldn't get my, my feet into anything. <laughs> so it was time to say goodbye. That was when I finally said goodbye to my, my awesome shoes. Now I'm all about arch support and sensibility. <laughs> okay, so there is my card front. Now we're going to go ahead and glue this onto our card base. Now this is an important step, okay? Normally, when I'm, I would, I'm gluing together a card base, I would put adhesive all over the back and stick it down, right? Well, if I do that, I'm not going to have an easel card. I'm just going to have a regular card, okay? So when we are doing this, we only want to apply glue to this bottom panel here. So let's fold our card base in half to start. Where'd my bone folder go? There it is. Okay, and then I'm going to take and fold this extra score line in as well, okay, because this is going to stand up kind of like a mountain, okay? So now I'm going to go ahead and add my adhesive. So I am going to add quite a bit of adhesive. I'm going to use my fast fuse, my precious, precious fast fuse, because this is going to get a fair bit of wear and tear, okay? So I have added my fast fuse. Now I can go ahead and layer my DSP on there. And it's just like you're putting together a regular card, you're just not gluing down the top part, okay? So there now is my easel. All right, you with me? Now before we finish up the front of the card, we have to add a bow. So here is your bow tying lesson. I'm using that same textile ribbon, okay? I'm pinching the ribbon between my thumb and my index finger to create two loops and keeping the ribbon flat. Crossing the left loop over the right, bringing it around and through. Okay, and this ribbon is positively yummy to work with. It is so easy to tie pretty bows. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that, Heather. I don't know too many nurses who live their lives in stilettos. I actually, I would wear heels to work as a teacher, as a music teacher who was on their feet all day. That's why my feet are so messed up now. <laughs> Honestly. Okay, so I'm adding a glue dot to the knot of my bow, and I'm just going to add that just to the perfume bottle there. Okay, so that's the front of my card. Now, we can't forget to add 
some winky winky so we're gonna add a little bit of sparkle to our flowers because every girl likes bling especially girly girls okay and then we need to decorate the inside now this is important as well because when we create an easel card we have to make sure that we have something that is popped up on the inside of the card that is going to catch that card front and help it to stand up if you just have this flat it's not going to stand up okay so let me show you what I did there so I have just a piece of whisper white cardstock it is four and one eighth by five and three eighths inches and then I have just a little off cut from when I was cutting my DSP piece for the front okay so this is I think three-eighths of an inch maybe by four and an eighth I couldn't tell you exactly it was just a little piece that was left over so I'm going to start by adding that to the bottom edge of my DSP or of my whisper white cardstock so we'll get that on there and centered Okay, and then we're going to stamp a sentiment. Now this sentiment actually comes from a stamp set called Strong and Beautiful. This is an awesome stamp set for um, cards for women. It is just, it's a great, it's got great sentiments um, and something for everybody. And it's not just Mother's Day. Okay, so this one, I mean, this could be for anybody. It's going to say, you're amazing and that's a fact. So we are going to stamp in basic gray ink. And I'm going to stamp about halfway down. Okay, so right about there. We're going to hope and pray that's straight because I've already glued my DSP on. <laughs> Thanks, Heather. I'm glad you like it. Okay, then we need to add our little popped elements to catch the front of our card. Okay, so I have two more of these little die cut flowers. And I'm going to grab my dimensionals here and add a large and a small. Again, you want to make sure these are well secured because they do get a fair bit of wear and tear because they have to hold that card front. And we're going to put this on here like this. And we'll add one on this side of our sentiment and one on this side. And you just want to make sure these are about the same height so that the card, when it catches the front, it stands up evenly. All right, so we're going to add a little bit of glue to the back of this. And we're going to pop that inside our card, just like that. And there we go. We can stand that up, and there we have a perfectly cute little easel card. Okay, isn't that fun? Such a girly card. All right, so that is number one, basic easel, not difficult to do. Okay? All right, let me get rid of some stuff, and we're going to move on to number two. Where did I put my bin? There it is. Get rid of all of this. And we're going to move on. All right. So number two is a slightly different take on the easel card. So this one, instead of having the entire card front pop up, we just have a strip in the center that pops up. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to do your cutting and scoring to make that happen. All right. Now I'm using my old stamp and trimmer because I loaned my new one to a friend who was doing some scrapbooking and didn't have a trimmer. So you'll have to forgive the old school trimmer. But uh, you know what? I still really love it. So it works just fine for me. All right. So I have a standard card base. Okay. So this is five and a half by eight and a half. It's half a sheet of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. It's scored in the middle at four and a quarter. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do to create this easel card is I'm going to start by placing my card front. I'm going to make sure you guys can see this. I got to back up a little bit. Okay. So I'm placing my card front into my trimmer at one and a half inches. Okay, and I'm going to cut from the top down to four and a quarter. Now my numbers have worn off here, but four and a quarter is right here. You can also see where the score line is. So I'm going to cut down to there. Okay, then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do the same thing. One and a half and cut down to four and a quarter. Oh my stars, you guys, if you could smell the bacon cooking in my house right now. <laughs> oh, it's killing me. All right. So now I have my two panels that are going to glue flat. That takes care of these side panels, okay? All right, now the center panel, we have to score to create our easel. So this, the width of, or the length width of this, I guess, is four and a quarter. So half of four and a quarter is two and one eighths. So I'm going to insert my card base horizontally this way at two and one eighths inches. And I like to use my bone folder for this just because it's more precise. So I'm gonna start where the cut line is and just score across the next cut line, okay? And then I have my scored 
easel. Okay? You with me? I hope so. All right, we can get rid of this. The rest of this is a piece of cake. So we are going to start by folding our card base in half along our score line. Okay? And then we're going to secure these two guys down. We're going to glue them down. So I'm just going to add a bit of Fast Fuse to each of these. Whoa, come on, Fast Fuse, work with me. Oh my goodness, I cannot wait for the new adhesive. Cannot wait. June 3rd can't come soon enough. All right, so we're going to just pop this down. I just want to make sure that they are flush as I glue that down. Okay, same thing on this side. We're going to glue that flat and flush. Okay, all right, now we're going to add a little bit of DSP to decorate those. So if you'll recall, these are one and a half inches. Okay, so this is one and three eighths wide by four and one eighth long. Okay, so we're just going to add that. Let's turn this, let's do it this way. There, I like that better. Okay, and I'm just going to add a little bit of Fast Fuse, or not Fast Fuse, Tombow to the back of this, just so I have wiggle time to get it centered. So we're going to add one little panel, and another little panel. This is a great way to use up little bits and bobs of DSP as well. Because you don't need a big, big piece for this. You can use little strips, which is nice. Okay? All right. Now we have our inside piece. So this piece is Whisper White cardstock. It is cut to two and a half by four and one eighth. Okay? It's the same width as this panel here. You see that? How it's the same width? Okay? Now, before we glue that down, we are going to decorate just a little bit. So I have another little bit of DSP. Again, another little scrap strip. This, I think, is about, I don't know, five-eighths of an inch, maybe, by two and a half inches long. So we're going to glue that onto the bottom. Come on. Pop that on there like that. Okay, and then we are going to do a little bit of stamping again. So on this one, I actually used the Happy Mother's Day sentiment from the Dress to Impress stamp set. So we are going to ink that up with basic gray. And we're going to stamp her Happy Mother's Day. So I'm going to do this one about halfway down, okay, because I need room to put my little stoppers in there for my easel. Okay, so for now, we can go ahead and glue that in. We will add our stoppers after. So we'll add, again, a little bit of Tombow to the back of that. And we're going to pop it inside just like that. And you're going to want to make sure when you glue this down that you have that bottom, those bottom edges flush. Okay, so it looks kind of continuous there. Okay, so far so good? You with me? All right, so now we need to decorate our easel. So first thing I'm going to do is take and fold this back, okay, because that's the part that's going to stand up. All right, and then I have a strip of DSP. This is two and a half by four and one eighth inches. Okay, so the idea is that when this is, is closed, it is going to be the same like flush top and bottom like that. Okay, the Happy Mother's Day Elfie is from the Dress to Impress stamp set. It's this one. Okay, it's right here. Um, so I have this strip, and this again is more of that gorgeous DSP. Um, we used some of this last week on one of the honeybee cards, but I'm using the polka dot side. And I have a stitch label. So this is cut using the stitch nested label dies out of Whisper White cardstock. And then I have this lovely sentiment that says, God made you my mother, love made you my friend. And I'm just going to try and straighten this a little bit because if I try to stamp with it as crooked as it is right now, bad things will happen. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stamp that in basic gray ink, and I'm going to do it pretty much centered top to bottom on there. Okay, just like that. And then we're going to decorate. Now, I have a thing for fussy cutting lately, apparently. I've been doing a lot of it, and I really love the flowers in uh, this DSP, so I fussy cut a bunch of them, and we're going to decorate using that. Why the heck not? So we'll add just a teensy bit of Tombow there, and we're going to add one pretty flower, and then we'll add another pretty flower. Again, just a titch of Tombow. And I like using the Tombow because it gives me that wiggle time, right? So I can kind of get things arranged the way I like them. And then this guy is going to go on. I'm actually going to pop that one up, I think. Let's get a bigger dimensional. So let's do that there. And I should probably add a leaf as well. Let's add a leaf. Let's do a single leaf. 
we're gonna add a single leaf just tucked in here so we're gonna add a glue dot to that and we'll pop that on there and then we'll pop that on there and then we have these little itty bitty flowers which I just love I'm gonna tuck that one kind of in behind there I think I'm just gonna use a glue dot for him he's so teeny and whenever I have little itty bits like this that I want to place I like to use my take your pick because it just makes placing them so much easier so we're gonna just tuck that guy right in there come on there we go just like that and then we'll add one more up here with a couple of leaves as well adding the leaves just gives a little bit more dimension here so we'll add the leaves there and then that guy is going to go on just like that so we'll add just a little bit of tombow there and maybe a titch to the leaves there we go and we'll just tuck that in there like that so pretty isn't it pretty gotta love those flowers all right so this is going to go on to the front of our card but we are going to pop it up well, not the front of our card the front of our panel and we're going to add just a couple of dimensionals here and we'll get rid of our backings and we'll pop this on so this we want to center top to bottom and side to side okay so right about there and then this is going to get glued onto our card base so again in order for this to work as an easel we only put our glue down here right so i'm going to add my fast fuse and then I'm going to go ahead and add this. And the goal is to get this straight while looking at it sideways. There we go. Okay, so now we just need to add our little stoppers here. I have a couple of itty bitty little flowers. And again, they need to be popped up. So I'm going to add a mini dimensional to the back of each of these. And we're going to, whoopsie, we're going to pop these up right about there so one there and one over here just like that there we go isn't that cute now the last touch of course is a little bit of ribbon so i have a little bit of the polka dot tool ribbon now this is on back order right now it's actually not orderable it's coming it's coming uh there have been lots of delays thanks to our friend COVID 19 um but it is coming back and it is in the new annual catalog which makes me happy because i love this ribbon okay so there is card number two so a second take on an easel card now you may want to there's not a ton of room to write here right so you may want to add a panel to the back um, to give you some space to write a message okay it depends how wordy you want to be okay so that is take number two on an easel card and then we're gonna bring in number three so this guy let me just get rid of some stuff here again so this guy is similar to one that I did a few weeks ago using the poppy um, bundle. However, that one was a double easel. This is just a single, okay? So this one, and I also didn't do a, a belly band for, for this one. I wanted to keep it a little bit simpler. So this one just ties shut. So I'm just gonna tie it up so you can see how it looks closed. Okay, so it ties shut like that. And again, I'm using some of that yummy, yummy textile ribbon okay so that's the way it would come out of the envelope okay now i did add on the back of this one a panel for writing a message okay so that is how it comes out of the envelope we untie it this one's going to my mom because i really like it and then it stands up like this okay so the message that you're writing is actually going to be on the bottom this is more of a little decor or a really pretty little mantelpiece okay so i'm going to show you how to do this again not difficult okay so let me show you all right so i have here a mint macaron card base again it is five and a half by eight and a half so standard card base scored in the middle at four and a quarter okay so then all i'm going to do bring back my trimmer again and i'm going to insert i need to cut in the middle this time so i'm going to insert and slide it over to two and three quarters so half of five and a half is two and three quarters so it's going to go in right to there okay and let me just turn this over so i can see the score line a little bit better and i'm going to cut from the top down to my score line so down to four and a quarter inches again okay so just down to there all right 
Now I need to do my scoring. So this is going, I need a score line that goes from here to here and here to here. So the easiest way to do this is to place it into your trimmer so that, and I gotta make sure that you guys can see that. Let me just try and get this in. Okay, I think you can see. Okay, so I have here, let me just point with my bone folder. So there is the, 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 the end of my cut that's where the score line is, okay? So I'm centering that in my cutting track, get rid of the dimensional backing there, and then I'm also centering the corner, okay? I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, I think you can. Okay, so then I'm just going to start at the top of that cut and come down to the corner with my bone folder, okay? I find that the easiest way to do it. Same thing on this side. So I'm going to, again, get that centered on the cutting track and come, whoa, that's not centered, it moved. Well, let's fix that. There we go. We have a little oopsie there, but I think we can hide it. Okay. My camera gets blurry. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I actually have asked for a new phone for Mother's Day. So we'll see if uh, my family listens. I'm hoping I get a new, new phone with a better camera because I think that's the issue. I have a, an old iPhone 7. Okay, so that is what my card base looks like. Okay, so now to fold it, I'm going to fold in half along my score line. And then I'm going to take these side panels and I'm going to fold along my diagonal score lines. And this is where we have to hope that my score lines were accurate. This is not going to be pretty. Come on, work with me, people. There we go. Okay, so there is one, okay? And then the other one is going to come in here like that. So that ends up being my card base, okay? This is not pretty down here. Normally it would be prettier, <laughs> okay? All right, so now we are going to decorate, okay? All of this is um, DSP, all the work. The only stamping here is our sentiment, just like the last card. So I've fussy cut a bunch of these flowers. I love this pattern in the DSP pack. So this is going to be my base for the inside, okay? It is cut to four, or sorry, five and three eighths by four and one eighth, okay? So it's gonna nestle right in there like that. So we're gonna go ahead and glue that down. Hey Debbie, no worries. You can catch the replay. Apparently my um, phone is not cooperating very much, very well, and it is getting going in and out blurry. So I apologize for that if that is frustrating anyone. Um, hopefully by next week I will have a better phone <laughs> and better camera. All right, so we've got that glued in, ready to go. Okay, now we're going to add our triangle panels on the front. So to get these panels, you are going to start with, let me just make sure I've got two halves of a hole here. There we go. Um, you are going to start with a piece of DSP that is two and, like I think about this, two and five, no, two and five eighths, yes, by four and one eighth, okay? Then you're going to insert it into your trimmer and cut on a corner from opposite corners, okay? All right. So we are going to go ahead and add some glue here and pop one on here. This one's got to go here just because of the orientation. So we're going to add that one on there. And then its mate is going to go down here. I'm sorry about the blurriness, you guys. Like I said, here's hoping that um, a new phone will solve those issues. We shall see. Okay, and then we have our second set. So we're gonna go ahead and add those. Again, using the liquid glue just makes it a little bit easier to wiggle these into place. So we'll add one here. Just like that. And then our last one's gonna go down here. Okay, there we go. Okay, my scoring was a little bit off there, so it's not perfect, but you get the idea. Okay, so that is our card base, done. All right, 
So we're going to set that aside for a minute and we're going to focus on this beautiful um, label here. So I started with another one of those gorgeous ornate um, layer dies. So this is the smallest one. I cut it from silver foil. Okay, and then I have cut a stitched rectangle, so similar to what I did on the first card, um, a stitched rectangle to go in the center. Okay, and then I need my Happy Mother's Day stamp. There it is. We are going to stamp Happy Mother's Day on our white rectangle. I love that purple too, Joy. Um, it is purple posy, and it is so soft and pretty. So we are going to go ahead and stamp our Happy Mother's Day there. Okay. Thanks, Elfie. All right. So then we are going to decorate with a bunch of fussy cut flowers. So again, I told you I was on a fussy cutting, fussy cutting kick. <laughs> and uh, so I just fussy cut like a whole six by six sheet of these little flowers because why not? They're pretty. So I'm going to start now. This was cut from the edge. Okay. And a lot of people when they're fussy cutting will ignore these partial ones. But you know what? You can totally tuck those in. And no one will know that they are not full flowers, right? You can tuck them in from the back. So I'm going to use this one here, I think. So we're going to add a couple of glue dots just along that bottom edge. And we're going to tuck this guy in just like that. Okay. Oh, you know what? I'm going to move them over a little bit more. We'll do that. I like that better. There we go. Okay, and then we are going to add, we need to add a little bit of a petal pink one. So again, this is another one that was cut from an edge. So I'm just going to add a glue dot and then just tuck that in. And you'll never know that that's only a partial flower there, right? And then we're going to add a couple leaves. So I'm going to add another set of leaves up in the corner. Come here, it's stuck to my finger. So I'll add some little leaves there. And we're going to add another pair of leaves sort of down on the other corner. So we'll add these guys down here. Okay, and then I thought I wanted a little bit of softness. So I just punched um, with the sprig punch out of just plain white vellum. Um, just to add an extra little bit of softness and just a different shape. So that is just going to kind of peek out from behind my flowers like that. Isn't that pretty? All right, so then at the top corner, we're going to do something similar. So we're going to start with a large petal pink. And again, this is a partial one. Doesn't matter. Nobody's going to know except you and anybody else who's watching. <laughs> and we're going to just tuck that sort of in the corner like that. And then we're going to add another purple. Do I have a partial purple? I do have a partial purple. Can you say partial purple three times fast? All right, we will add this guy here. And then a couple of leaves again. Where are you, glue dots? I need to get rid of this very long tail I have on my glue dots. So I'll add, let's actually tuck those in there like that. Oops, turn it so we can see both leaves. There we go. And we'll do one more set on the other side just to balance it because symmetry is good. So we'll just add these little guys here. Oops, we don't want to see the glue dot though, so we'll do that. And then I have another little punched sprig out of vellum, so we're going to go ahead and add that. Nope, that's going to be too high. It's not going to work with my... There. There we go. Isn't that pretty? And then we're going to go ahead and pop that onto the... Yes, Joy, the stamp sentiment is from the Best Dress stamp set. Thanks, Elfie. I missed that. Hi, Debbie. I am doing great. I hope you guys are as well. Um, staying safe and staying well. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and add some dimensionals to the back of our little arrangement here. We'll get rid of all of these backings, and then we're going to glue it to our foil. So we're going to go ahead and just add that centered on there like that. Isn't that pretty? Oh, love it. Okay, so then this is going to get glued on just sort of near the bottom, okay, and in the center. And again, we're going to pop this up. That's going to help to be our stopper for our um, easel. So again, I'm going to add a couple of dimensionals here. And that's going to get glued on right near the bottom. 
in the middle-ish. Let's just make sure that is in the middle. Yeah, that's pretty good. Nothing like eyeballing it. Okay, so if you get lucky, this will catch, but because this is such an inter intricate die cut, I found these were bending and it wasn't holding my easel up really well. So we are going to add just a couple of extra little stoppers, a couple of small little flowers here. So we'll just, oh, I'm running out of dimensionals, add a couple of dimensionals. So I'm going to stand this up to where I want it, and then I'm going to put my little stopper there. Okay, just like that. And then same thing on this side. So we're going to stand this up and add our stopper just to make sure that that is straight. Okay, so that that's going to go like that. Now I'm noticing I didn't do a great job of gluing this. So I'm going to add a little bit more glue here because it's bugging me that that is peeling up a bit. Come on. There we go. That's better. Okay, so that is the inside of our card. Okay, done. Now to finish the front, all I did is I started by adding my ribbon. So I'm going to take and cut. I like to work from my roll again. So what I'm going to do is just lay my card on top of my ribbon. Get this out of the way so you can see. And then I'm going to bring it around and I want to make sure that I have enough that I'm going to be able to tie a bow. Okay, so I'm going to cut it, I don't know, right about there. What is that? Maybe about 20 inches? 20, maybe it's two feet. Okay. And I'm going to, I want this to be towards the bottom. Okay. So kind of, I don't know, an inch and a quarter up from the bottom. All right. Now to secure this so that when we untie it, it doesn't come off completely. We're going to add a little bit of adhesive. So I'm flipping it over and I'm going to use my fast fuse. You could use, um, tear and tape snail probably won't work. Um, tear and tape is probably your best bet. You could also use glue dots, okay, just to glue that down so that it stays put. Now, don't worry, that's going to get covered, okay? All right, so then I'm going to go ahead and tie that shut. So we'll just tie this into a pretty little bow. The reason I'm tying this is because I need to see where I can put my flowers so that it's not in the way of the ribbon, okay? So tying it and having it laying flat makes it easier to work with. Okay, so there is my bow, okay? And then we're gonna just add some more little groupings of flowers. So I added some up here, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So just add a glue dot and add that, and then I popped these up, and what I did, because I wanted to make sure that I wasn't gonna see my adhesive, is I just ran my dimensionals along the edge where the fold is, okay? And then get rid of my backings, and we're going to pop that on just like that. Okay, and then same thing on the other side. We'll do this, and we'll add one of these little guys down here. So we'll take a dimensional, or sorry, glue dot, and then some dimensionals and pop this on down here. So one and two, and we'll add those down here. Okay, you know what? I don't like the way that that, uh, I wanted a little bit more. I'm going to add another, another flower because I don't like the way that that looks. Uh, we're going to add that right there. Tuck it in behind. There we go. That's better. I like that better. Okay, and that's it. That's your finished card. So easy, right? So here it is closed and here it is open stand that up okay so that's the open and closed version all right you could add a sentiment on the front if you wanted to just keep in mind whatever you glue you want to make sure that you're not going to interfere with your your popped panels once it's once it's standing up okay all right now on the back I'll just show you on my sample I did add a four by five and a quarter inch panel of whisper white partially to hide my ribbon and also so that I had more space to write okay because like I said this one's going to my mom Okay. All right, everybody. Let me just bring in all of our samples again. So we had one, two, and three. All right. I hope you like those. Um, three different versions of an easel card. And again, easel is one of the easiest fun folds to try. If you've never tried a fun fold, this is the one to do. Okay. All right. What goes on the back? Sorry, I missed your question, Alfie. Um, 
I'm trying not to... Okay, I answered the question. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Thanks, Alfie. I was confused there for a minute. Okay, you guys, that's it for me. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed these, and I will be back on Friday, barring any other incidents like last week. Um, I won't have my new phone by Friday, but hopefully by next Tuesday, um, things will be much better and much clearer. Okay, thanks for sticking with me. Have a great week. Stay safe, and we'll see you on Friday. Bye for now.